In this video we are going to create a panel. In this video we are going to create a panel for adaptive page content and create some scrolling interaction with gestures. We'll also create some conditional logic that queries the current adaptive view. Now we're going to add our page content to the prototype. As we said before, we're not going to use pages in the conventional way. Instead, we're going to create a dynamic panel where each state is effectively a page. Interacting with the menu will change the state of the content panel. First, open the viewport panel. In the base view, we'll drag a panel out. Let's name it content. We'll size the width appropriately for this view. We'll repeat this sizing process across the other views now. In the 960 view, we'll move it below the header and resize the width. Now we'll double click into our new content panel to add some widgets. We must remember to go into our base view first. We're going to add a heading one widget and a paragraph widget and we'll adapt these appropriately for each view. We'll change the heading text and make the heading one smaller for this view. I'm going to blow the text up for the smaller screens and add some more text so we have enough content to scroll with. In the medium view, we want the paragraph to span the width. And for the large view, we'll span eight columns in our grid. We blow the font up in the header and reduce the font size for this viewport size. OK, close the content panel and go back to the viewport. Now we haven't set a height yet for our content panel. This is because we want the height to stretch or fit to the content. So we'll check the fit to content checkbox. Now we'll just demo this to ensure that it works as expected. And as you can see, the much longer content panel is clipped to the size of the viewport in the small and medium views. Now we want to set up some interaction to allow us to scroll through the content panel. We could just go to the viewport panel and select to show vertical scroll bars as required. Let's see what happens. Press F5. So now we can scroll through content and this technique will work on some mobile and tablet browsers but it's not quite what we're looking for. We're going to use some gestures to achieve the scrolling in our prototype, specifically the on drag event so that it will work on touch devices without scroll bars. So let's go back and deselect the scroll options for the viewport panel. We are going to use the on drag event on our content panel. OK, let's add a case description. We'll call it move content panel. So on drag, we want to move the content dynamic panel. How do we want to move it? We'll choose with drag Y 
to move the content panel on the Y axis or up and down rather than side to side. Click OK. Let's test this now so we can scroll the large view in a conventional manner. When we resize down to the medium view we can drag content up and down. Oops, you can see there that the content is scrolling over the header so we need to bring the header to front. Let's fix that now. We also need to restrict the drag of the content panel so it doesn't stray out of the viewport. Let's do that now. This can be a little tricky, so we're going to create an inspector widget that tells us the location of the content panel while we're dragging it. This will help us understand what restrictions we need to place on the drag action. The inspector is a label widget which will drag out onto the header in the viewport so it's visible for us. We'll name it inspector. Now we're going to use the on drag event of the content panel to update this label with the vertical position of the content panel as it's dragged. Let's add a case to the on drag event. Now on drag of content panel we will set text on inspector widget to a value. OK, what value? We will open the edit text dialog to insert a function. Don't let this intimidate you, it's quite straightforward when you know how. The value we want is the top of a widget. So what we have to do now is a statement, this dot top. What this does is return the position of a widget, specifically the top of a widget. Which widget you ask? Well, a word this has helpfully been inserted here. What is this? Well, this refers to the widget to which this case is associated, the content panel. So this statement will return the top position of the content panel. Nice. You can of course set this to query any widget or panel, but let's stick to baby steps for now. Okay, let's preview F5. Okay, logic hat's on. Now we can see what the Y value of the content panel is as we drag, and we can quickly surmise that dragging the content panel down past 50 is undesirable. So we need to write a conditional statement that says, if top of content panel is greater than 50, then don't move content panel. Else, move content panel. Let's do that now. Select the content panel. Now, what we just described were two cases. The first is don't move content panel. The second is move content panel. Now, you can see that we've already created the latter, so we need to create the former. Let's select an on drag event and then click on add case. Case description is don't move content. This action is conditional, so we're going to need to open the condition builder. We need to test if the top of the content panel is more than 50 pixels down the page. We're going to test a value, a value you'll recognize because it's the same as what we use for our inspector widget. Insert variable or function this dot top okay so if the value of this dot top is greater than a value of 50 what do we want to do we want the content panel to effectively stop being dragged how do we do that 
we simply move it back to a desirable location within the viewport. That is the panel's starting vertical position of 50. So add a move action. Check content panel in configures actions or indeed this widget. Move to 0, 050. Okay, we now need to look at our interactions tab because it isn't ordered correctly. It starts with move content, but we don't just want to allow the user to move content. We want the don't move content case evaluated first and the move content to be executed in the event that the condition in the don't move case isn't met. So we'll drag the don't move case above the move case like so. Now it reads correctly. If this dot top is greater than 50, then move this widget back to 50. Else, move content widget with drag Y. Let's see how this works for us. And there we are. We can't drag the content down beyond the desirable portion of the screen. Of course, you can drag it off the screen in the opposite direction. This isn't something we're going to pick up in this tutorial because we want to continue the course which is creating a responsive menu. Maybe this could be some homework for you. A wee bit of tidying up left to do. If we go to the large view, you will find that you can use the mouse wheel to scroll the page. But if you accidentally drag, you will find some undesirable consequences. We want to disable dragging in this view. We can do that quite easily by adding to the condition that we just put together. Let's reopen it. We want to edit the condition. We're going to add to the condition by testing the current adaptive view. We only want to trigger this case if the adaptive view does not equal large. OK, we want to apply the same logic to move content. So we'll add a condition to this case following the same adaptive view test as we applied to the don't move case. Adaptive view does not equal large. OK and OK again. Let's test F5. And the large view isn't doing anything. It's been excluded from all our dragging logic. One final bit of tidying up. We'll unplace our inspector widget from view, keeping it there in case we need it later. Coming up in the next section, we have the addition of an adaptive menu system.